Perez Hilton exclusive. I love you. Thank you. And I'm so happy that you finally have a new album out. I know. I read recently though that some some bad people told you a few years ago not to make a new album. Well, they did. And they're <laughs> not really. They weren't really bad people, but they were. It was 2005. We had just come off the road from 135 Fleetwood Mac shows, so I was pretty exhausted. And I was, but I was going to make a record. That's what I always do. I go Fleetwood Mac, Stevie, Fleetwood Mac, Stevie. So it was Stevie time, and uh, the powers that be said. Was to it me, the label, or it was? It was no, it wasn't the label. It was more just the industry and my management and everybody that said we think that right now um, the music business is in a terrible place, and um, internet piracy is just destroying the music business. So maybe right now is not the best time for you to make a record. So maybe while the getting is good, you should tour, do some projects, and wait until maybe it starts to get fixed. So um, had I not been exhausted from 135 shows, I might have said, well, no. But I, I just kind of went, OK. And so 2005, 2006, 2007, I did Crystal Visions. I did um, You did another PBS Fleetwood Mac tour thing, as well? Right. I did a, a big Fleetwood Mac 83 shows tour. And when I got done with that, um, I said, I'm ready to make a record. And I, and I don't care if anybody buys it. I'm just gonna, it's for, I'm making it for me. And I hope that- And your that, fans. Yeah, but, I, but I, when I make something for me, I know that if I love it, my fans will love but it. But you need some rest, God and it's best. Album, Dave Stewart from formerly of the Eurythmics right. did most of it with you. Right. Had you and him been friends for a long time? We had. We met a long time ago. We met after uh, when their first album came out, and then we didn't meet again until "Don't Come Around Here No More." Tom Petty. Yeah. Dave wrote that song for me. Oh wow. And we took it in with Jimmy Iovine, and then we called Tom Petty, and Tom came down and. Uh, I went home because I was tired, and when I came back the next day, it was all written, and it was fantastic. It's the same song that is out, the song, with the same track. And I, you know, being a huge Tom Petty fan, I sat and I listened to it, and I'm going like, so what, I'm going to rewrite this song and write better words than Tom Petty did? So I was very pissed off, but at the same time, very much enamored with the song that had been written. So I said, Tom, it's your song. and. Uh, Dave, I'm sorry, and Jimmy, you're fired. <laughs> were you dating and him at the time? <laughs> no, we had broken up. Oh, so, so you can say we you're still, fired. Right, but we were still, you know, we were still friends, but I was pretty angry about it. But at the same time, I knew what a great song it was. And I knew that this was going to be, I knew for my friend Tom that I adored, that this was going to be like the second coming of Tom Petty. And it worked a little differently on this album, because you wrote some songs with him too? So what happened was, it was January. We just come home in December. Um, I called Dave and said, "Would you? Are you interested in working with me?" He said, "Yes." And I have a song that kind of like "Don't Come Around Here No More." It has a chorus. It has four lines, and I'd like you to write the verses. So I said, "Well, send it to me," and I in turn sent him a, a binder with forty poems. And then we, he said, he put, pulled a poem out of the binder and said, "I love this poem." So. Let's work on this. And my living room was, we already had a Pro Tools rig set up and we had a microphone hanging down over the coffee table. And so he sat across from me, just like this, and he picked up his guitar and he started playing. And, you know, whoever was engineering pushed play. And uh, he said, so let's go, basically. And I just sort of started to recite my poem in a sing songy kind of way. And in 30 minutes, we had written a song called You May Be the One. And uh, I was, it was like an epiphany for me. I, the golden doors opened. And I thought, OK, now I understand why Paul McCartney and John Lennon wrote songs together. 
because yes, they can write amazing songs by themselves, but together, sometimes they say that, what's that saying, this, the sum to total uh, yes. is better than the single parts, something like that. Um, and I realized that, you know, Dave, with his amazing un understanding of music and thousands of chords, and me with my thousands of poems, that, you know, as Dave will say, if she never writes another word, we have enough poetry to make 30 more albums because I write poetry all the time. Stand back, stand back In the middle of my room I did not hear from you It's all right, it's all right You'll be standing in a line Well, yeah, you can be standing in a line it was Now, I, I heard rumors that Fleetwood Mac might be getting back together next year. Is that, is that true? Can you talk about that? Always. It's you definitely know, happening? When uh, Lindsay has a record coming out in the fall, and by the way, it's extraordinary. Are you on um, his record? No, but that was before we had our amazing <laughs> piece, you know. Um, but it's my favorite thing he's ever done. I, I think it's brilliant. I think he took some serious melody pills and lyric pills, and he came up with a beautiful, beautiful album. Um, so that's going out in the fall. This is coming out May 3rd next week. Yeah. Um, so by the time, you know, when this album and Lindsay's album come to a stop, then Fleetwood Mac will gather again and we'll either make another record or we won't and we'll just go on tour. So that hasn't been decided yet? That has a new, a new yeah. record? So you just got off the road with Rod Stewart. Might you be doing your own solo tour soon? It all depends on what happens when this record comes out. And I have said this to many people. What do you because mean? you don't really know. So if, the, if it doesn't if, sell if the, that yeah. much, you're not going to tour? If the record comes out and it's, you know, blasts out like a, a rocket, and then all of a sudden you'll start getting off, offers from promoters, from Europe, from the United States, from Australia. We're already going to Australia in, in, uh, in November. We do well in Australia. I don't even have to have a record to go to Australia. But so if the record is a huge you know, sparkler, then you never, you don't know because people will wait. All the promoters, all the people in this business will wait to see what this record does. And if it does really well, But you're Stevie then, Nicks. You can tour whenever you want. I know, but I just did 18 shows coming across the United States with Rod Stewart. So it, we have really played the United States, even though there's, you know, 50 more, we did 53 Fleetwood Mac shows two years ago. So there's, you know, thousands of other cities you can go to. But I can't tell you, Perez, because I honestly don't know. What do I hope? I hope that this does come out of the gate like a rocket. And I hope that people do love it. And I hope that we get offers to play all over the world. Is there anybody um, you're really liking these days? I, well, my favorite song right now is Katy Perry's song, E.T. Really? It's my favorite. Interesting. I love it. And I will stay up ha until four in the morning to see the video of it. <laughs> <laughs> Twice. Um, I love it. Well, wonderful. Thank you for having me in your home. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for coming.